Chegamos a mais um tutorial. Hoje nós Now we got to one more tutorial, and today we'll begin a new series entitled Christ, the Connecting Center of God's Work. This book one, or volume one, as you wish, is entitled Christ, the Center of God's Work. Today, we'll begin in week one, entitled The Background of the Letter to the Colossians. So, we'll begin the book of Colossians, but for now, we'll be doing an introduction into this book. We were finishing the book of Ephesians, and now, after this book of Ephesians, then we'll get to Colossians. These two epistles, they are sisters, they are complementary. They do not replace one another, but they, they complement one another. So here, let us see the background of the letter to the Colossians. Na segunda-feira, o título é Title is the blood on Monday. The title is the blessing of God, the flow of river of grace. We saw that in the book of Ephesians. This flow of grace continues in the book to the Colossians. On Monday, it is always an introduction of the upcoming days, what we will be covering. So, here we see that the background to the Colossians gave to the Apostle Paul the opportunity to bring light, revel crucial revelations about the preeminence of Christ on all things. Christ is the center of God's economy and God's work. He is the aggregator center, joining the whole creation and keeping everything stable and operational for the fulfillment of God's unchanging will. So this book covers a lot, and also this daily food. The author will be covering a lot about the will of God. I believe that today we'll be understanding a little more on the will of God. Now in part two, let us see how the church in Colossae, that how they uh, were raised, the difficulties they went through with teachings and practicings, mixing of religion, philosophy, and culture, entered into church life, leading them astray from Christ deviating them from Christ. This is very severe, how, how Paul dealt with this negative situation. And finally, we got to know the names of some important people in the church history in Colossae, how they were perfected by the Apostle Paul. So I praise God the Lord is giving us this revelation because He knows, the Lord knows that we are a group of people who want to do the will of the Lord. We want to be useful to the Lord. And here the author uh, shares with us this phrase that we're not here only to get more knowledge, but we want to be useful to the Lord as a church in Philadelphia. For this church, the Lord unlocked the treasures of the prophetic word and if we value and love and practice this word, the will of God will be completed in our generation. This is our hope and expectation. And then, how to bring in the book of Colossians in this rhythm of a daily food so we have to get back to Ephesians. It all began in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the peace heavily here here the grace in the heavenly places in Christ. Here the river of grace and began to flow and to fill every emptiness spaces in us first would be the dispensers of God's grace. Still speaking on the river of grace, this river of grace appeared in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 10. There the Lord prepared a second chance for man to be connected to God because with the fall of man here in, cha in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14 we saw that man lost the access to the tree of life man was driven out of the garden of Eden because he disobeyed God and as a consequence man was disconnected from God and then there was a great emptiness and this emptiness unfortunately was taken up by Satan who is the very vanity a lie and falsehood so on and so forth contrary to God but God of his mercy who was rich in mercy made this river to reach us because this river was not only to water the Garden of Eden this river went out of the Eden and divided in four river heads. We did not understand, they parted and became four river heads. We did not understand why, but now with the revelation of the word, we know that these four river heads, it is to reach the entire earth, the whole directions, east, west, north, and south. And this planet will be reached by this river of grace of God. Every man will be reached, reached, praise God. That is why the Lord also put inside man this river of grace as a source, force to flow out within man. We see that in John 4:14 4, with a Samaritan woman, and then 7, 37 and 38, Lord Himself said that whoever, if anyone, he who believes in the Lord as out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And also in Psalms 46, 4, we see that there also there's a river with streams shall make glad the city of God. So the city of God is the church. In the church today, there's a river that make glad the city of God. And by finishing that the will of God, it is that we are an open channel for the grade that we received to flow from us and to reach other people. Once again, here we see the will of God. From Thursday onward, the will of God will be very important. Pay attention to this word, the will of God. And then the Lord wants that once we receive this source inside of us, this source must flow out for us to be channels for the flowing of this river. Amen? And we can advance and then get to Tuesday. On Tuesday, it is entitled a summary of the epistle to the Ephesians. Let us get there. In Ephesians chapter 1, we saw God's good pleasure according to His will. What is his will? The will of God, it is to head up in Christ. Christ to head up all things, right? So Christ, he is the head God gave to this head, or the head Christ, to the church. This is in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. But we saw that the Lord desires through the church to fill up everything, all the empty spaces, not only from all people, but then from everything. And then in chapter, in verse 10, we see that God actually wants a new creation, right? 
this new creation, it is in the word workmanship. Ephesians 2.10, we are God's workmanship. And this workmanship is a new creation created in Christ Jesus through the old creation that was created, right? So the old creation that God wants, through the old creation to produce a new creation. This new creation, it is his workmanship. And then in, the chap in chapter 2, we see that Christ, he put down all the middle wall of separation, all amity. He, he broke down the middle wall of separation, abolished in his flesh, so that made peace and make one body. The end of it, it is for us to become God's dwelling place in spirit. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And then that is why we need to be those dispensers to flow out the riches of Christ. This is chapter 3. Paul presents himself as a dispenser. A dispenser or steward. A dispenser is the one who keeps the pantry taking care of the pantry and the dispenser, it is the one who distributes the riches that are in the pantry to all of the members in the family. So this is important. And then what are we dispensing? This is in chapter 3, verse 8. We are dispensing the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. Then Ephesians chapter 4, we saw here that for that, the Lord then, he needs to distribute gifts, ministries, and this ministry, it is for the building up of the body of Christ. That is, it's not merely some are building the body of Christ, but for all the members in the body are building together the body of Christ. But they are being perfected by these men gift. And then in chapter 4, still in verse 17 and 21, we see that walk in love, in truth. Walk in truth. We must be filled every pores of our being with the truth. What is this truth? The truth is their reality, and the reality, it is God himself. And chapter 5 and verse 2, we saw their walking in love. God loved us, and God is light. So in 1 John, let us see 1 John 1, 9. Here we read, If we say we have no sins, if we confess our sins, his faith from just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Speaking here because of light, so when light shines upon us, that we can realize that we have shortcomings, failures, and then we need to repent and to confess our sins before the Lord. This is a great key for our salvation for us to press on and move forward in God's purpose, in loving people, to love one another. This is quite important. In chapter 6, then, we see about the spiritual warfare. The spiritual warfare, for this spiritual warfare, we need to be put on the whole armor of God, right? And chapter 6, verse 12 says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not just going out and, and fighting with men, no, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. This is our wrestle. But how are we wrestling? We just punch people up in the air? No, they're just a... Where are they? We are wrestling to stand 
firm to take position as in Second Chronicles 20, 15, 17, in the valley of Jehoshaphat, God said to them, you don't need to fight. You don't need to use your weapons. Just take possession to the extent but the battle is mine. I'll be overcoming this battle. Today is the same thing. We have to fight the way we have just to take stand and then to be unshakable. And then in chapter 6, 17 speaks of our weapons. So far, God's armor, it is for the defensive. But there's one for offensive, for attack, which is the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. That is why we treasure the prophetic word because this is our weapon for us to advance against the enemy, against his kingdom, and we overcome this battle. Hallelujah. Now we get to Wednesday. So here, then we let us enter in the book of Colossians. It speaks about the background of Colossians. The background, it is that Paul was imprisoned, was taken to prison in Rome, and it was allowed that he would read a house for two years. He read it his house, a house, right? In Acts chapter 28, verse 20. Acts chapter 28, 30 and 31, we read, the Paul dwelt the two years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the gospel of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. So we see that Paul himself, even being a prisoner, he'd rather to rent for a house or who would have more freedom to talk to people, to receive people who were interested in hearing about the kingdom of God, even though the Paul was under custody, there were soldiers, he was uh, in handcuffs, and there was a soldier there keeping him at all times. Still, with all boldness, he was speaking the word of God. And we know that Paul, in this environment, he wrote four epistles, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. This is in a period of around the year 60 to 64 after Christ. And these four epistles, they are known as the heart of the Bible. That is why in Colossians was also written in this Roman imprisonment. I praise the Lord for for this. So this is the background of, the, of Colossians. Later on, we saw that the location of the city of Colossae was situated in the, the, the valley of the river Lycus in old Phrygia. You may read it in your daily food, all of that, in order to prepare the word. And there, he mentions as close to Laodicea and Hierapolis. As for Laodicea, we know of a verse for the church in Laodicea in Revelation 3, 15 to 17. The Lord said to the church, for the Laodiceans. I know your work that you're neither cold nor hot. I, I could wish you were cold or hot, and so then, because you're lukewarm, neither cold nor hot will vomit you out of my mouth. So the saints who visited those cities, they said that there is a turn, the hot springs, this is in case the church in Colossae, but there, when the hot springs came out in Laodicea, when it got to Colossae, this water was already lukewarm. It's not so hot. 
That is why the Lord connected that to lukewarmness in the church in Colossae. So we see the importance of perfecting. We see that Paul in Ephesus, he spent there three years. There we see Paul speaking to the elders in Ephesus. In Ephesians, Acts 20, 31. He said that, uh, therefore watch and remember that for three years he did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So he spent there three years. But there's another verse in Acts 19.8. It says, uh, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. Here we see then the Paul separated the saints who were disciples and took them to a place called school of Tyrannus. Probably there it was a place where Paul was giving them perfecting. He saw that there was a need to perfect his followers. So then there joyfully we see that there in Ephesus Paul then created some sort of a GPC center for the perfecting gospel perfecting center that is the center was to perfect the workers so first paul took three months in the synagogues discussing that jesus was christ and then the more he was reasoning and tried to persuade people the more people were hardened speaking evil of the way and then he saw that it was pointless, and he called those who really follow the word of the Lord, those who love the word of the Lord, those who really want to follow the Lord and his word in the school of Tyrannus. And then he used that time to perfect those workers. And from these workers, when they were perfected in Ephesus, we can mention the name of Epaphras. Epaphras he was somebody who began the church in Colossae, and then he, he began the church in Laodicea and also Hierapolis. That is, is a very, very useful worker because there's no record of Paul had been to these three cities, Colossae, Laodicea, and Hierapolis. But through his co-worker Epaphras, the testimony of the church in these three cities were raised. So it is quite important. Let us read a couple of verses. In Colossians 1, 7, we see the name of this worker. As you also learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. So here we see quite clearly that Paul speaks to the Colossians. He mentions the name of Epaphras. And then in chapter 4, 12 and 13, once again, Paul mentions the name of Epaphras. Epaphras is one of you, a bond servant of Christ, greets you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those in Hierapolis. Epaphras did not care only for the church in Colossae, 
Colossae, he also cared for the churches in Herapolis and Laodicea, so it was worth it for Paul to create a perfecting center in Ephesus. From there, there were workers to raise a church. And also one of those workers was Philemon. Philemon's history Philemon was also from Colossae. And Philemon is related to the story of Onesimus. Onesimus was a slave in the house of Philemon. He was bought by him, but Onesimus, he then fleed from Philemon's house, and he defrauded Philemon. So Philemon was quite resentful with him, but Onesimus, his name was useful, but he was useless. You can read it, Philemon, a little letter to Philemon 13 and 4 to 13. All of was wandering around the, the cities, the streets of Rome. He met Paul, Paul preached to Onesimus, and then Paul said, before he was useless for you, but now is very useful for me and for you, especially for me. So we see that once again, the GPC, quote unquote, in Ephesus, really perfected not only Epaphras, but also we have examples of perfecting for Onesimus. Onesimus, praise God, amen. So I ask you, saints, you have a chance, go to GPC and spend some time in GPC to be perfected. Hallelujah. On Friday, the treasures of knowledge and wisdom are in Christ. Here we see in Colossians, Paul saw that there were deviations in the church, there were mixtures in the church in Colossae. That gave an opportunity for Paul to show that Christ is the center of all. Christ is the most important of all. Christ is the connecting center of God's work. But this situation mixed up. They had Judaism with their ceremonialisms, with the rituals and Jewish rites. There were also Greek philosophies mixed up there. For example, Gnosticism, saying that the uh, flesh is good for nothing, that the, the flesh had to suffer because of that. And then there was that gave rise to the asceticism, to, to strict the strictness of the asceticism by punishing the flesh they wanted them, them then to put the deeds of the flesh to death. But you know they cannot do that on, their, on themselves, right? The more they try to renovate the flesh, to make the flesh to suffer, they will never save the flesh. And I praise God, Jesus, that they do not know that the gospel was for that, the gospel shows us that Christ died on the cross and he put to death our flesh with its old man. The flesh is already crucified. Therefore, saints, what a Jew, I am crucified with Christ. You are also crucified. Our whole flesh was crucified with Christ. Our flesh is dead. So there is no need for you to try to punish your flesh today because in fact we already died you only need to live this experience day to day that it is dead but i praise god that the lord already annihiled our flesh he's done away with the flesh what a deliverance from colossi unfortunately there was this mixture in chapter 2 verses 2 through 4 you see here that um, for that their hearts may be encouraged, been knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, 
to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now does I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. Well, then Paul here wants to speak about Christ. The mystery of God is Christ. And in Christ are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. Lest no one deceive you with persuasive words. That means to be persuaded, to be enticing, luring, using fake news, false words. Lord Jesus. Then we get to Saturday showing us that Christ is the center of all. Paul wanted to show to the Ephesians, to the Colossians, that do not put together other things with Christ, do not put together Judaism with Christ, do not put together Gnosticism with Christ, do not put together the practice of asceticism with Christ. Christ is the center of all. Christ is the first of all. He is the first. Is the first. Here, let me read a portion for you in Ephesians. Bear with me, okay? So let no one judge you because of feasts or moon, because of all of that is shadow of the things that are to come, of the bodies of Christ, meaning that all these things are just shadows. These are shadows, just shadows. These are just shadow. The reality of all of that is Christ. That is why he goes on to say that the bodies of Christ, he said for, for no one to be using their fleshly mind, not retaining the head, so on and so forth. He said that if you died with Christ for the for the world, yes, we died with Christ for the world. And he asks, why, as if you lived in the world, you were subjected to the ordinances? So, uh, pray the Lord, we are free from the flesh and the sin because of the death of Christ. Christ died. We died with him on the cross. Amen. Do not touch this, do not taste that, do not handle this, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against indulgence of the flesh. They tried to restrict the flesh with their strength, but there's no value against indulgence of the flesh, because the only thing that can really to defeat the indulgence of the flesh in man is the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus. And then there are also a couple of verses here. Here we read that there's nothing superior to Christ, nothing that can be compared to Him. Anything that we see, anything we enjoy is Christ, and because of Christ, Christ is a connecting center between God and creatures. Here it is interesting to see that Lucifer, he wanted to be this connection between God and man. It seems that he was saying to God, God uses me as a call here, call a fellow king to help you. You don't understand creatures. Since I am a creature, I understand creature. So let me be this connecting point between you and man. But God did not choose Lucifer. God had already had, had chosen the Lord 
This is in Psalms chapter 2. Let us turn to Psalms chapter 2. It is worth it to read this portion. Psalms chapter 2. Here we read chapter 2 verse 6. Here we read, Yet I have set my king on my holy hill. God had already set his king on his holy hill. And he said, I will declare the decree of the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten. So my son is the firstborn son of God, born through resurrection. And God the Father says to the Son, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. And also in Isaiah 42, we have something very interesting. Isaiah 42, God already chose. He had He chose already. No, it's no longer Lucifer, but my son. He said, "Behold, my servant, whom I." Uphold my elect one in whom my soul delights. Put my spirit upon him, he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. So the, the elect one was the Son of God who died and resurrected and became the firstborn Son of God. Hallelujah. So there's a very important portion here. In Colossians 1, 16 and 17, says, In Him were created all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. Hallelujah. We consist because of Christ. He is the one who upholds all things. Finally, we got to Sunday. Here we read, Christ reconciled all of creation with God. Well, here, brothers and sisters, I'd like to get your attention to the will of God. Here there's a phrase that said that it means that Christ produces the will of God. Pay attention to this phrase, produce, to produce the will of God. Brothers and sisters, we are on earth. We have a prophetic word, and the prophetic word, and when we receive it through the immersion of the word, when we immerse in the word, this prophetic word is implanted in us for what? To produce something. It's not merely for our enjoyment, oh, this is good, right? But it's to produce something. What is to produce? To produce what? To produce the will of God. The earth was created to produce the will of God. God is using His church to produce the will of God. To produce, it means that it needs to bear fruit. We need to bear fruits to God. This fruit, it is the will of God. Hallelujah. And this fruit of producing the will of God, we see in Ephesians 5, Ephesians 1, 5, there we see about the, um, the good pleasure of His will. And also in Ephesians 1, 9, you see uh, God wants Christ to be the head over all things, and all things to be headed up in Him. And then, also in Colossians 1, 18 and 19, let me read it to you. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, firstborn from the dead, that in all things He may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. God wants to produce the new creation. The new creation is in another dimension. It is another sphere. And this another dimension, also Christ is everything. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Well, then with that, we finished the, the letter to the Colossians really shows us a very rich Christ who is made available to our enjoyment. That is why let us not allow anything to disturb us, to deviate, to, to lead our attention away from this wonderful Christ. With your brothers and their sisters who are watching and seeing me, labor in the daily food, prepare a very tasty food in the prophetic word. Use also the immersion. It's an amazing resource to make the saints to penetrate in the filling of this word. Christ is the connecting center of God's work. Amen. Jesus is Lord.